video focuses on the name year sequence of CSE style 8th edition. This citation style is specific to the sciences and this video is meant to provide an introduction to the style but is by no means all inclusive. CSE stands for Council of Science Editors and the most recent version is the 8th edition. If you access other information about this style, make sure you are looking at information for name year sequence that is specifically the 8th edition. Here is the book cover. There are 722 pages of fun inside. Take my word for it. Just like with any citation format, you always cite. Every single time. If you summarize an entire article into your own words, you cite it. If you use a word-for-word -word quote from an article, whether it is three words or three sentences, you cite it. If you get an idea from another source, cite it. You will not go wrong by citing, but you could end up violating academic integrity if you don't. My rule of thumb is always cite. If you aren't sure, cite. While there are three versions of CSE, this video will focus on the name year format. It is good to be familiar with the fact that there are three versions within this one formatting style though, as you will likely see all variations as you conduct your research. The main differences between these versions are how sources are included on the reference list at the end of the paper and how sources are cited within the text. Let's take a look at the citation name option first. For the citation name style, all sources are alphabetized on the reference page and numbered accordingly. When a source is used within the text, the appropriate superscript number is used. Superscript numbers are small numbers that serve as in-text citations. Citation sequence is the next option. This is similar to citation name in that sources are numbered on the reference page and the corresponding superscript number appears in text as the source citation. The difference is the sources aren't numbered alphabetically, but in the order they are used in the paper. Whichever source appears first in the paper is source 1. For both citation name and citation sequence, superscript numbers appear either at the end of a sentence or where an author's name or title of a source are used within the sentence. The format we are focusing on is name year. The name year format does not number sources on the reference page or within the text. Let's talk about the reference page first. The last page of your assignment will contain all of the sources used in the assignment. This is a bibliography or reference page. Most citation styles prefer the format of double-spaced text with a hanging indent on the bibliography page. While this is standard, CSE doesn't specify, so consult your assignment guidelines and or instructor. Samples in this video will all have the traditional double-spaced hanging indented format. The bibliography page includes the sources used in the assignment. The sources are alphabetized by the first element in the entry. While this is usually the first author's last name, an organization can be used as an author too. If no author exists, use the title. Always use the first element in the reference entry to alphabetize the list. Here is a sample bibliography from the UNC Library website, which is a good resource for CSE. I suggest checking out the information there. This sample shows the basic elements of the CSE name year style. Notice all entries begin with last names and only first and middle initials are used. Year of publication is also important in this format. Dates are written differently as year, month, day. Additionally, only the first word of a title is capitalized and no quotations, italics, underlining, or bold are needed for any entry. Let's look at a few specific samples. The first one is a book with one author. The author's last name is Meech and the initials are LD. Notice there is no punctuation between these. The year of publication is 1988. The title of the book is The Arctic Wolf Living with the Pack. Only the first letter of the first word should be capitalized, but here we have an exception because Arctic 
will be capitalized anyways. So if a proper adjective like Arctic wolf or a proper noun like North Carolina is in the title, you keep it capitalized. Next, there is no addition, so that element is omitted from the sample entry. The place of publication is Stillwater, Minnesota. Notice how the state is abbreviated and in parentheses. The publisher is Voyager Press. The extent is basically the number of pages in a book. This isn't required, but I saw it on every sample, so I would say it is standard. This doesn't require adding the number of appendix pages to the number of pages in the text. Just look at the last page of the book and include that number with a P period after it at the end of the entry. The next sample has multiple editors. Notice how names are listed with only commas between them and no and. If you have a source with more than one author, this is how you will list the authors. In this case, these are editors, not authors, so the word editors follows the list of names. The rest of the information is similar to the first example because these are both books. Your sources are likely to be online articles. This sample shows how you'll cite articles found through NC Live, which is my suggested source for research because it has everything and is free to you. As a bonus, we have amazing librarians who will help you navigate NC Live and learn how to research. For all sources, you start with the author's last name and initials. For online articles, the next step is the title, then the journal title, which is usually abbreviated. If there is an addition, include that. If not, just go on to the next element, date. The date for this is 2003. In brackets, you'll also need to include a date updated, if there is one, or accessed. Remember to use the year-month-day format. Notice the lack of spaces and the punctuation. Journals often have volumes and issues. The volume will always come first and the issue will always be in parentheses. If your source has an issue but no volume, just include the issue in parentheses. If your source has a volume but no issue, just include the volume number and omit the parentheses. The next item is the location. Use the URL for this. Lastly, the notes is an optional component. This is the place where any additional information would go that would make it easier to find the source. The DOI belongs here. The DOI is the Digital Object Identifier and works like an ISBN does for printed books. When you find an article in NC Live, you should use the Cite button on the right-hand corner to get a start on your citation. While this quick reference is not always 100% accurate, most people prefer to start with something than from scratch. After clicking on Cite, this box will appear. It is really important to select the correct citation style from the options listed. The default is APA because the citation format options are listed in alphabetical order. The next step is clicking the Change button next to the citation style. If you forget to click the Change button, you'll end up with APA format instead of CSE 8th edition name year sequence. Don't make this mistake. Here is the NC Live generated citation. I copied and pasted this directly from NC Live. Unfortunately, this citation doesn't provide all of the necessary information for the CSE bibliography. It is a strong start, though, and there are only a few more elements needed. If we look at the generated citation compared to what information needs to be included, the date of publication is in the wrong spot, and three elements are missing. The access date, URL, and notes. Let's walk through this step by step. The first adjustment I'll make is to move the date to after the journal title because it's easy and I just don't want to forget. Next, I'll add the access date. The access date is the day you access the material. For me, this day is October 17th, so 2017, October 17th. Always use that year, month, day format for CSE. 
Next, I'll include the URL after the page numbers, and if there's a GOI, I'll need to add that too. To find this information, I'll go back to the article. When we first look at the article, we are looking at the full text PDF, but in the top right corner, other options are provided. By clicking on the Abstract Details tab at the top of the page, we are able to see all of the article's information, not just what was initially pulled for the citation. Here we can copy and paste the URL and see if there is, in fact, a DOI for this article. Uh, both will need to be included at the end of the citation. Uh, I do see the document URL and also the DOI here. Let's go back to the citation we were working with and add that URL and DOI. I'm only adding a DOI because there is one. If there wasn't, I would skip this step. I copied and pasted the URL and DOI right from the abstract details screen we were just looking at. To recap, this is the citation from NC Live compared with the one we just correctly edited. It was fairly simple to edit the generated reference into the correct CSE reference, as NC Live provides all the information needed. Now that we have covered the basics for reference entries, let's talk about citing sources within the assignment. In-text citations point the reader to the full source entry on the bibliography page. It isn't enough to cite sources at the end of a paper. You have to cite within the paper so it is clear which information came from which source. The name year version of CSE is self-explanatory. In-text citations contain the author's last name and year of publication in parentheses with no punctuation between them. This in-text citation format is the same whether you are citing a direct word-for-word -word quote or putting someone's ideas into your own words. Since an in-text citation points to the source on the reference page, I always start with the reference entry. Copying and pasting the generated citation into a blank document is good enough for beginning the bibliography, and it provides the information needed for the in-text citation even though the reference still needs editing. To cite sources with one author, like the first example here, use that author's last name and the year of publication in parentheses. The second example has two authors. In this case, use both last names connected by the word and and the year of publication in parentheses. If a source has three or more authors, use the first last name and et al with the year of publication in parentheses. Et al is a Latin abbreviation that translates into and others. Some sources don't have individual authors, but use organizations instead. In this case, the organizational abbreviation is what begins the reference entry and is the in-text citation. The last example illustrates this. In every case, the in-text citation is the first element on the reference entry. There are no exceptions to this. Here are a few more examples of different in-text citations. If you need to cite more than one source in one in-text citation, simply connect the citations by semicolons. If you use the author's last name in the sentence, there's no reason to include it again in the in-text citation. In this case, just use the year of publication in parentheses. It is important that the reader can easily use the in-text citation to find the full source on the reference page. If you happen to have two sources with the same last name, include the author's initials in text. If you use two sources by the same author that happen to have the same publication year, use lowercase letters to differentiate the sources. I know this can feel overwhelming. If you need any help with CSE or writing in general, the Writing Center is a free resource for you. Visit the Writing Center website for more information about our hours and services.